Oh my goodness! All these new additions to Dragonflight have got us super excited for what's to come for WoW PvP. Many classes in WoW are about to be kitted out with some of the best abilities you've ever seen in the game that are going to absolutely blow your minds when starting out in solo shuffle. That's why today we're going to be talking about the 9 most overpowered talents that are absolutely going to shake up the meta in Dragonflight. From instant one-shot combos to insane purge effects that have almost no counterplay, we will be breaking down the most important talents that everyone needs to be on the lookout for in this expansion. Now, although these talents are strong, remember there are ways you can play around them. We did say almost no counterplay, but with the help of a rank 1 coach, any one of you could learn exactly how to adapt and overcome in Dragonflight by mastering the fast-paced environment that something like Solo Shuffle brings to the game. Where are you going to find a rank 1 coach, you ask? Well, that's where we here at Skillcapped have got you covered. Over on our website, we have gotten ahead of the game by creating world-class courses for every single spec that you could possibly play in Dragonflight. Over the last month, we've had dozens of the best players in the game come together to share everything they know about how to climb the ranks in the new expansion. This is an opportunity you literally can't find anywhere else, and in fact, we believe in our site so much that we will offer a money-back guarantee to anyone who actively uses our site and can't seem to find value from it. Come try Skill Capped Out, you won't be disappointed, but now let's get into our first broken talent in Dragonflight, Radiant Decree. Red Pallies, I'm sure, are all rejoicing at the value this ability is going to bring to class. This is easily one of the highest damaging nukes in Dragonflight, oftentimes hitting for over 200 thousand damage. Oh, and what's the best part? It cleaves! That may sound absurd to some, but let me just break down how this talent works real fast. By taking this talent, it will actually replace your Wake of Ashes ability with this new one, Radiant Decree. Where Wake of Ashes generates three holy power, Radiant Decree actually costs three holy power. This means that it will also scale with holy power modifiers such as Divine Purpose, Final Reckoning, and Judgment. With so many abilities ramping up the damage on your holy power, you can easily escalate this 15 second cooldown into some of the most insane damage you've ever seen. Considering it can be kind of difficult to get all of your modifiers active at the same time, sometimes you will kind of need the stars to align to get the most damage out of this talent, but being able to dish out a 200k hit to multiple targets in just one second is absolutely absurd, so we definitely had to put it on this list. Speaking of damage cleaves, let's talk about one from our new class, Evoker. Evokers can be absolutely nuts in the right hands, and one of our favorite talents from them actually can be used by both Preservation and Devastation Evokers. That talent, of course, is called Tip the Scales. This talent is essentially just another Presence of Mind ability that will cause your next charged spell to be instant cast and count as full charged ability. Considering Evokers have many charged spells, Tip the Scales can be incredibly versatile for Evokers, but one of our favorite uses for this ability is combining it with another strong ability, Fire Breath. Fire Breath is a damage nuke that will hit enemies in a cone in front of the Evoker. Every enemy hit will be damaged. The longer Fire Breath is channeled, the more damage dealt. This alone isn't that crazy. To make this ability even better though, we'll also be taking the Scouring Flame talent, which now causes our Fire Breath to purge one beneficial magic effect from every enemy hit per level of the charge. This means that at max charges, Fire Breath can purge four beneficial magic effects from every single enemy hit, along with doing a sizable chunk of damage. This ability already hits pretty hard when you're Preservation, but what's even better is that Devastation Evokers can cast Shattering Star to push the damage even further, causing this instant combo to hit even harder. Against grouped up enemies, Evokers are going to be an absolute nightmare to deal with, so definitely be on the lookout for this ability or you might just end up losing all of your buffs and HP faster than you can imagine. That's not the only new thing coming in Dragonflight though, we've also got a couple of specs that maybe you wouldn't expect to be strong. For example, Arcane Mage actually has a pretty incredible nuke right now too that can be utilized to great effect. This is done by using a new talent, Arcane Arcane Surge, which will nuke all of your mana, and instead turn it into damage on the enemy target. Similar to Red Pallies, you'll combine this ability with a bunch of damage modifiers to make it hit for insane amounts of damage. Namely, the abilities you'll use are Touch of Magi, which will take 20% of the damage you deal over 10 seconds, and deal burst to your target for all of the damage accumulated at the end of its duration. Combine this with abilities such as Radiant Spark, which will give you 10% extra damage on every spell cast, stacking up to 4 times, you could easily take someone from 100 to 0 in just a few seconds. If you want, you can even combine these abilities with Presence of Mind for even more damage. We have the full combo Arcane Mages should be using over on our website, but needless to say, it's a ton of damage, which is exactly why you should be playing Arcane in Dragonflight. Let's fly on over to another Evoker talent that is definitely going to catch some eyes in Dragonflight. Skill capped, you're putting two Evoker talents on this list? I mean, hey, you can't blame us. They are the new class after all, and they've got some great abilities. This time around, we're talking about the ability Stasis, which allows preservation healers to duplicate their next three helpful spell casts, basically saving them for later. This ability also works on Cauterizing Flame, meaning that if a rogue is going crazy on your teammate, you could basically just cast Stasis, use Cauterizing Flame and two heals, and then just save the second cast 
forecast for a rainy day. Well, as long as that rainy day comes within the next 30 seconds. While this ability isn't as flashy as landing a perfectly timed Radiant Decree, this is easily going to be one of the best healing cooldowns in the game, and rogues and feral druids are going to hate going against evokers because of this. Let's move on to something a bit different now though. How about shamans? Are they getting anything new? Well, I'm glad you asked. They actually are. With this new talent, Elemental Orbit, shamans will be able to activate two different shield spells at once, allowing them to have both Earth Shield and Lightning Shield active at the same time. Not only this, but you'll also be able to throw your Earth Shield on yourself, as well as an additional target, which is an incredibly nice added bonus. This alone is pretty nice because now you don't have to be selective with which one you apply, but this also combos really well into another talent called Unleash Shield, which allows you to explode your shield applying specific effects for each type of shield unleashed. For Lightning Shields, this will be a knockback, for Earth Shields this will be a root, and for Water Shields this will spawn a Whirlpool that reduces damage and healing by 50% to players standing in it. So say for example you have a Water Shield and Earth Shield on. You can root the target in place and trap them in a Whirlpool that reduces their damage and healing 50%. Or if you have a Lightning Shield and Earth Shield on, you can knock them back and root them. The best part about this root is that it doesn't actually DR with any of the other roots in the game, meaning you can follow this up with an Earth Grab totem immediately after the full duration. We know this sounds pretty wild, and what's even more convenient is that shamans can take this talent as any spec, because, you know, shamans definitely needed more utility. While we're at it, we might as well talk about the last caster on this list, Shadow Priests. For Shadow Priests, we have our eye on a talent that is relatively simple to use, but is an absolute necessity for the class to be taking right now. That talent, of course, is Idol of Yasharge. This beauty basically just buffs your character while your Mindbender is active, applying a different buff depending on your target's current state. Specifically, the buff we wanted to highlight is the damage increase while used on feared targets, which also makes it so your damage will not break fear effects. This effectively turns your fear into an 8 second stun, which can easily be followed up with a silence and then a psychic horror to lock down your target for even longer. Of course, we don't need to be the ones to tell you how powerful this talent is. The crowd control alone is amazing, but when you sync this up with Dark Ascension, increasing your non-periodic shadow damage by 25% and Siphine to reduce the enemy's healing by 50%, it's going to be hard to have a good time fighting a Shadow Priest. With all of our casters out of the way though, let's pivot over to another spicy class, Rogues. The Rogue talent we chose is Deathmark, and although it's pretty straightforward, that doesn't mean you should underestimate it. Deathmark will deal a decent amount of bleed damage over 16 seconds, but the real damage is going to come with its second effect, which duplicates all Garrets, Ruptures, and Lethal Poisons on the target as well, dealing 100% of their normal damage. Combine this with any other amplifiers and the Rogue Shiv applying Hemotoxin, which reduces healing on their target by 40%, it is going to be a nightmare for healers to keep you up during death mark. That's about all we gotta say for rogues though. They're going to have a lot of dots and it's gonna be very scary. Let's move on to my personal favorite talent to look out for though. This one is coming in for Beast Mastery Hunters Call of the Wild. This ability basically summons up the whole zoo to go crazy on your enemies. It'll start by summoning two pets from your stables and then will summon one more for every four seconds after that. While this ability is active, you'll also benefit from any of the pet family bonuses, meaning that you'll basically just have extra movement speed, leech, and max health, assuming you have a Cunning, Ferocity, and Tenacity pet in your stables, which you definitely should. All of these beasts are going to use their special ability as well, and not only that, but they also will all benefit from Barbed Shot, thanks to your Blood Frenzy talent. For this reason, Beast Mastery Hunters are definitely going to be a class that brings the fight, since they generally benefit from using Call of the Wild early in their rotation. If you really want to min-max this spell as well, you'll want to set up your stables correctly to make sure your pets are summoned in the correct order. We recommend putting a Tenacity Worm pet as your second call pet slot, because this assures Call of the Wild will summon him first first, allowing him to apply Acid Spit onto your target, reducing their movement speed, making it easier for your other pets to stick onto the target. Lastly though, let's finish this off with just one last healing talent, this one coming in for Mistweaver Monks. One of Mistweaver's pitfalls in past expansions has been their lack of options to get out of stuns. Dragonflight has come in to provide them with tons of new options to deal with CC in a couple of different forms. The main talent we're taking a look at is called Restoral, which is an AoE heal that also dispels disease and poison effects. The best part is, this ability is usable while while stunned. You don't have to do anything fancy, that's just how it works. Along with this though, you can also take the talent Peace Weaver, which reduces Restoral's cooldown by 50%, and also makes you immune to magical damage and harmful effects for 2 seconds. Although this ability isn't usable while polyed, you could however use it before the poly hits to make yourself immune, even if they end up stunning you before the poly. It seemed like Blizzard really wanted to give monks more tools to deal with stuns, because they also are now able to use Transcendence while stunned, thanks to Eminence. This one is likely going to catch some players off guard, as they're probably used to just stunning monks and forgetting about it but now they're going to be a bit more annoying to lock down.
And that is our last overpowered talent that you're going to have to be looking out for in Dragonflight. What do you think of our list? Did we leave anything out that you have your eye on? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. And while you're down there, if you enjoyed the video, you might want to consider checking out Skill Capped with the link in the description. As we mentioned, we've been really putting in the work these last few weeks, making sure that all of our class courses are prepared for Dragonflight to give you the best start of the season that you could possibly imagine. Whether you're a WoW PvP veteran or a new player, we've got something for all of you to help you master the game. The best part is, if you've been playing Wrath, you'll get access to both sites for the price of one. With our rating improvement guarantee, you got nothing to lose, so be sure to head on over to Skill Capped and we'll see you there. Other than that, thanks everyone for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.